Thanks to our extraordinary men and women in uniform, our civilian personnel, and our many coalition partners, we are meeting our goals. As a result, starting next month, we will be able to remove 10,000 of our troops from Afghanistan by the end of this year, and we will bring home a total of 33,000 troops by next summer, fully recovering the surge I announced at West Point. After this initial reduction, our troops will continue coming home at a steady pace as Afghan security forces move into the lead. You heard it last night on President Obama's primetime speech that he will begin to bring the troops home from Afghanistan, beginning with 10,000 this year and in the future years, bringing more and more home. We have political analyst John Dadian joining us this morning to talk about the president's speech last night. And what's interesting about this is that General David Petraeus doesn't exactly agree with this plan. Well, you know it's a good public policy issue when they're split. And what's interesting about this, it's not the normal splits that you would see. It's not the Republicans have one opinion, Democrats. The Republicans are split, the Democrats are split. So what you're saying is if nobody likes it, then politically it's perfect. I did not say that. But what I, <laughs> okay. but what I will say is... When you do have those divisions, and again, for the Democrats within their own party, I will give the president credit that this is leadership. At least he is taking a bold stance, that he is staking out his position. But uh, Heather mentioned specifically General Petraeus. The military is pretty much against this. Uh, they think it's a little too much, a little too soon. Uh, with the exception of Secretary of Defense Gates uh, clearly supports it. Well, what's interesting is things just began to stabilize in that country as far as uh, less loss of troops' life in there, uh, less bombings, less in insurgents. Except in the northern part of the country where we hear things are less stable than ever because none of the surge troops went into the northern part of the country. So the areas where they are tend to be more right, stable. Right. So is it too early is it what the, a lot of people are asking? The original battle plan, uh, which has been unclassified, is it was supposed to stabilize the south and then go to the north. They've stabilized the south. They haven't gone to the north yet, and that's why people are concerned. They're not completing that. I use the word vacuum. What I'm concerned about is anytime you create a vacuum, somebody's going to fill it. Well, is, isn't the, the argument pretty clear here that if you just tell the Taliban when you're leaving, all they have to do is, uh, you know, rest and s resupply and get ready for when we leave and then move right back in? Well, you know, Mark, the interesting part about Taliban is I've always thought that the American people confuse the term Taliban with Al-Qaeda. Right. Al-Qaeda is really our enemy. We have already, as we speak, in negotiations with the Taliban, so we're, we're not sure how that's going to go. I'm not sure if I like that or not, but that is the status quo. This has been a long war, and that's when the Longest sentiments... American history. It's echoed for, for many people. Is this a political move by President Obama coming up before the election that majority of these troops will be brought home right before the next election? Oh, and absolutely. It's a combination of several things politically, such as keeping with his promise, as he referenced many times, uh, you know, with West Point, and, and when we, he was on the campaign. Clearly, it's political on some uh, aspects, but this is where our system, you know, overlaps each other. It is political because he is running for re-election, but he is commander-in-chief, so it is a military decision. However... All the surveys that we're seeing right now, and you tell me if you're seeing the same thing, say that this next election will in all likelihood be decided on the economy and not the wars. However, this could affect the economy, could it not? If we're spending less in Afghanistan, we have more to maybe spend here domestically. Yeah, absolutely. And again, nothing is an island. Uh, everything overlaps each other, so the economy is absolutely going to be affected. When I mentioned before that there were splits among the Democratic Party, Republican Party, after the speech last night, I talked to many Marines, both non-coms and commission officers. They're split. What does this mean for the morale here in San Diego, huge military town? Again, it, 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 as I just mentioned, it's split because some people say, you know, I've talked to a couple of Marines last night that say not only do I want them to put more troops in, but I can't wait to go back. And I've had uh, other active duty Marines say that, you know, it's too long a war, the longest in American history. So it, and I wouldn't say it's affecting morale per se just because there is such diverse opinions. I have a nephew uh, that's a corpsman that's in Afghanistan right now. And from what I hear, it's still tough. Oh, it's I'm, still very tough there, and it, it hasn't stabilized in the region that he's working in. No, absolutely, and Mark, you know better than anybody. One of the Marine Corps models is esprit de corps, so Marines are very proud of who they are. But I got to tell you something: Marines love their corpsmen. When the bullets start flying, the Marines jump on the corpsmen. Right. All right, John Dadian, thank you so much for your expertise good, on this issue. Good to see you both. Thanks, John. Talk to you thank soon. You. Hey, for more information, go to our website, sandiego6.com. Click on Hot Topics.